Hi, I'm Rono Meyer, Google Developer Advocate. Today I learned how to get one terabyte of data processed with Google BigQuery each month at no cost, without entering a credit card. If you're excited to explore the BigQuery public data sets like these, but you're not excited about paying for it, there's great news. BigQuery lets you process a terabyte of data every month at no cost. Getting started is quick and easy, and you don't even need to enter your credit card details. We'll get started by navigating the docs to the BigQuery web UI, or you can go directly to bigquery.cloud.google.com. At this point, you'll need to sign in using a Google account. Once you're signed in, continue to BigQuery. We'll start by creating a new project. If it's our first one, that means first reading and accepting the terms of service for the Google Cloud Platform. Eventually, we'll want to take advantage of the free trial, but let's dismiss it for now and create our project. You can share data and queries from BigQuery, so make sure you give your project a good name. Once the project's ready, we'll get a notification. Click that, and it'll be selected as our active project. We're now done, and we can start running queries. I'm also going to enable the BigQuery API here so that I can run programmatic queries later. Before I run some queries, let's take a quick peek at our billing tab. As you can see, this is a new project, so there's no billing instrument associated with it. Now, when we head back to the BigQuery web UI, we get the BigQuery web UI. Let's start by querying the USA Names database to make sure we can use that free quota to query the public datasets. BigQuery charges for queries using one metric, the number of bytes process, rounded to the nearest meg with a 10 meg minimum per table referenced and data processed. If you open the query validator, you can see the number of bytes that will be processed by running the query you have entered. This is calculated as the total data processed for the columns you select, even if you set an explicit limit, so it's much more important to reduce the number of columns you process than the number of rows you return. When the query returns, the number of bytes processed is displayed here, and your query log shows the exact number of billable bytes. Note that you can preview the full results of every table using the preview button, so you rarely need to select star on a table. When you're comfortable with using BigQuery, we can add a billing account. You still get a free terabyte each month, but you also get to upload your own data. In addition to queries beyond the first terabyte, BigQuery also charges you to store data and stream inserts, but loading data, or copying, exporting, or performing metadata operations like list, update, and delete, aren't charged. If you're new to Google Cloud Platform, you can take advantage of the free trial. It will let you continue experimenting with BigQuery, still at no cost. The pricing page here has details on exactly how BigQuery calculates the cost of each query based on the types of data in each column. Here I've switched to an account with billing enabled, so I can create a new data set and query some of my own data. Here I'm using data kept externally on Google Drive, rather than storing it within BigQuery. When you need more than a terabyte in a month, you're charged at a rate of $5 per terabyte. You only pay for what you use though, and it's rounded to the nearest megabyte, so that works out to about half a cent per gig. And note that you can set cost controls so that once your credit card has been added, you don't have any unfortunate surprises. Tune in each week to learn more BigQuery tips and tricks. For now, use your terabyte of processing to analyze your own data or use our public data sets to understand the world and create cool visualizations. And don't forget to share them with us using the Today I Learned with BigQuery hashtag. And of course, subscribe to our channel and follow our blog to learn something new with BigQuery.